Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our bonus coverage of HFES 2018. My name is Nick Rome. I'm joined today by Blake Arnsdorf. And also joining us, we have Dr. Kermit Davis, uh, who is the president of HFES and also an associate professor at the University of Cincinnati. Today, Kermit, we are going to be talking about a little bit about who you are and uh, sort of our partnership over the last couple months. And then also sort of what we can expect from HFES as an organization over the next year. So, Kermit, before we start, though, I just sincerely want to thank you for everything that you've helped us out with. Uh, I think we may have alluded to it on the show, but you have been pivotal in sort of helping us interface with the organization to talk with some of the interviewees that we, we've had a privilege to talk to this week. So, sincerely, thank you. Well, th- thank you. I mean, I, this goes a, a two-way partnership. I, I saw this when we, we put it together. Uh, I, I feel that this is... Uh, it was it was a very interesting uh, how we got here uh, because uh, we, we had one of our we, we, every year we or the last two EC meetings we've had mentees come executive and, council uh, right executive council sorry executive council meetings and we've had uh, we established a mentee mentor uh, program and so we've selected three early career to students uh, type of individuals to come. And at the mid-year in March, this last March, it was very interesting because we had one of the the, the mentees said, have you ever heard about this Human Factors podcast? And all the EC members looked at it and was like, no. (laughs) 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 And so it it really uh, started us uh, talking and, and... and I think afterwards, I think every single one of us went out and, and listened to it. And uh, I certainly did. I, I listened to several uh, episodes, and it got me to thinking that, you know, this is really the, the gap that we're, we're missing is how do we get to that next generation? And, and a lot of people that do listen to the podcast. Um, and, and so it led me to contacting both of you and, and uh, certainly talking about how we can, you know, make it. A, a real benefit because I know it's the podcast isn't affiliated directly with Human Factors and Ergonomic Society, but I see it as a great partnership down the road. That, oh, yeah. you know, with all the content we have, and I mean we're members too, so it's yes. not, we're part yeah. of the family. It's not like you know just strangers walking in with microphones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, y- you mentioned that there's this gap that you've identified that that we're missing, and I was thinking that. Um, well, first, let's catch our listeners up with who are you and, and kind of what research you conduct and, and just kind of let them know general sense of who you are and how you got involved with the organization. Well, I've been in the, involved in the organization since 1997. Uh, I do occupational uh, ergonomics, so I'm on the physical side of things uh, with human factors ergonomics. Uh, I, do, um, I, do, I do it in all industries, but uh, in the last six or seven years, it's been focused in the healthcare ergonomics and so I do a lot of safe patient handling evaluations but also uh, looking at how patients maybe uh, get, move in beds and, and get injured during that process and it's all about how it can help people not get injured and so uh, we, we are oftentimes doing very quantitative assessments and so it's not as much survey type of data but we're actually going in and putting uh, markers on on people. We're putting goniometers and EMG electromography uh, uh, on on individuals to see what the strains and stresses are being placed on their physical body, which we know over time tissues break down, and that's how you get injured over cumulative trauma. Uh, and and so a lot of that research, um, you know, is oftentimes presented uh, at the, at the conference here. Um, and, that, and I had been involved in many of our various uh, uh, different uh, committees, um, but but uh, Waldemar Kowalski uh, was president, and I think it was about two thousand three or four. Um, it went to changing uh, the structure of our society. Uh, they instituted division, or they called them then div- domain leaders, but have now evolved into division chairs. So I was one of the four original division chair or domain leaders um, 
that were starting to do the tactical type of stuff on the society. So they were trying to make sure everything got implemented and we could shift the executive council more towards strategic initiatives. And we're starting to see that play out now because now we're really talking about the bigger picture, picture issues of like membership and, uh, and, and other issues that are hurting our, our society, uh, the HFES society, as well as global society. So we have initiatives that are in outreach. We have internal affairs type of, of ones. We have publications. We have education, obviously, with the, the annual meeting while we're here, and uh, the healthcare symposium, uh, and, the, and so it's all about the whole package. And we have these division chairs now that they're called, being able to help and coordinate all of the committees. And I was that, and that then transferred me into becoming an executive council member and uh, secretary treasurer, and then another bout on exec, executive council, and then. Uh, president so and I've been president-elect last year and now I'll be president starting this last Tuesday that's a great transition to kind of uh, we mentioned the gap and mm -hmm. we mentioned uh, sort of identifying this can we talk about maybe what HFES or you specifically have been doing over the last year as your role as president-elect and then after that we can transition into kind of what's what what we can look forward to yeah yeah so obviously it's a team uh approach uh we we have we have valerie rice this last year that's uh, and and myself that have teamed up and we're now teaming up with sue hallback who's the new president-elect on on initiatives to, to really build and strengthen our membership uh and we want to create an atmosphere of family that this is the place and that you want to be for this profession and that, that you no longer want to go to other I mean there's in our field there's so many different types of, of societies that are out there that you could go and belong to but we want to be the, the, the place you want to be here you want to we are the place where you get your science where we interact and where you come back every year instead of well, we'll pop in here we'll pop in there type of thing but every year you want to come back so it's about the networking it's about the context that, that, that you're there and so in, in last annual meeting, uh, the executive council uh, f uh, formulated uh, some new, c new uh, committees, um, which will lead into my next part of it, but uh, that really targeted m membership. Uh, we have membership committee that oversees some subcommittees that are talking about that one with retention, one about recruitment, one about uh, practitioner engagement, uh, and then an evaluation one that can help all these committees try to figure out what type of information we need to make it why people will retain why they we can recruit new people in and all that then we also have uh, a better uh, a more solid uh, commitment to mentorship so we created uh, we took a task force that was in mentoring to over to a, a committee now and i think you see a lot of that effects we have mentee mentor lunches and all day monday they're doing and and, and this is going to get ramped up even more because now we're not just approaching mentorship at the student and at the early career we're going to start looking at it as mid-career even if you're a, a full member, how do we get them to, you know, still be, I mean, everybody can use mentoring. Uh, so we also develop a leadership uh, development committee, which will help people transition from being a member to be a committee member, sort of the progression you saw myself go, where you start, you know, low, and then you start, and someday you can be a president of the society. And that's really what we want. We want everybody to have that, that, that buy-in that they feel that, hey, at least you have the opportunity. You might not make it there, but you can have the opportunity to, to reach the top leadership. Um, and then the other part of this is, is really the, the diversity part of it. Um, we're now getting a pretty good women's group. Uh, I've talked to several people about potentially creating some minority other groups uh, 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 and, and uh, other affinity type groups. Uh, and I, I don't want to say too much about that, but I think there's going to be potential there that we can really, again, allow people to come together if they want to. And if they don't, they can still get involved in everywhere else. And so one of my big initiatives um, moving forward into the short term is I f want more engagement out of members. So a lot of the initiatives have been pushing, that, and I feel that you can bring in 
pretty much anybody that, that wants to get involved. Um, I did a fellows poster that was about how to get involved. Um, my plenary, uh, Valerie Rice allowed me to talk for three minutes about plenary and, and, you know, about getting, you know, the reason you come to HFES here for this conference is about the people around you networking. And it's a little bit about the content that you're going to see, but it's really about the content because I'll give you, a, I actually was talking to a member, I won't say the, the person, but it was very interesting. They, they, they came up and said, I connected to this person, um, was talking to him at the mentor lunch, and they were telling him, telling him uh, that, that uh, he, I, I'm struggling in getting into this area. I need an internship really bad. And about three hours later, he had a conversation with somebody else who was saying, I'm struggling. I can't find a person for this internship I have open. And a light bulb went on, and and within those three hours, due to this conversation they had, the the, the the mentee and the person that had the opening, were and this was a good opening. This was at Google, so I mean it was a really good job. That's uh, awesome. But they were linking together, and both of them were like, "Wow, this is really great!" And now that they and and that's what's the key about the networking. You don't know when it's going to happen. But the more people you know, and, and, and this is what you, you, you don't get when it's a, a, uh, a, a, a conference on, online and you're not attending. You get that only when you're in person, face to face, and you get those collaborations. Then what lastly was the Pink Socks Initiative, um, which uh, I think, I don't know if you guys got your pink socks. But, we did. Um, oh, we did. did. That's World great. yesterday. Um, it's, uh, it's an initiative that I, I took off of Nick Atkins, which I know you interviewed, um, but I wanted to bring it to HFES because I felt this was the perfect mechanism to start this whole networking and getting people to go. And the whole concept of I was trying to get to, which is a little bit different than Nick Atkins, was to get people here to get out of their own little cliques because some of the times what happens is people come back, they return, you want to see all your friends, and you never go and meet anybody else. And that's the bi other big thing that you need to do when you go to conferences. Just don't stay in your, your own group of friends and colleagues. Get outside them, even if it's just 10 people. And so I would always challenge just, um, anybody that's attending any conference, try to, try to really meet, not just ha shake hands, but meet and con converse with 10 people and walk away with that. And that's really what the, the Pink Sox initiative is. And that'll, that'll return next week year. And not as to the level, but we'll, we will bring that back. And, and people that didn't have the opportunity to get Pink Sox this year, um, I actually pa passed out 792 pair. Yourself? Not that's myself. Oh, the executive right. council. And uh, sorry, I, I misspoke. We passed out uh, <laughs> 792. That's a lot of socks. I probably, I probably passed out three or 400. Um, wow. So I yeah. just kept reloading my bag. and But there was other, I mean, what I tried to do is have our exec, executive council members and our division chairs be the ones passing them out. So they were all given uh, 20 to 40, and a lot of them came back and got more, um, as well as the people that helped sponsor the, the, uh, the initiative. I gave them each a bag so they could pass out because they truly allowed me to, to do this. Um, and I and I can't tell you uh, it was great. I heard, you know this is anecdotal, but I had several people come up and said, "Yeah, I just kept having people come up, even though I had pink socks. They gave it to me. I took it because I wanted to make them feel good." And then they went and p passed it out to somebody else. And so right. some people passed out sync not socks to, to one other person. They passed it out to five or six to eight people. It was, which I never thought that would. That wasn't the plan of it, so right. it was that was a really great carryover effect. So I was really excited about that, and uh, and then I think the other aspect is some of our plenaries uh, with diversity and school violence were both ones that I think uh, you know I, I was very proud that we we did them. Um, uh, actually, I'm having a hard time uh, considering them for a, a re up next year type of thing where we, you know, different people, but g going and get them involved again. And cause I have, I have already had some other ideas we were already talking about for plenaries and, and, uh, it'll be a, a exciting uh, group of plenaries i'll say no matter what um the directions we have going they'll be announced before the call of paper so um they're going to be in the short term here uh being announced so oh very cool nice. yeah that's that's a lot sooner than i would have anticipated yeah. um, so that's cool we can kind of build excitement about hfes next year in seattle yes.
Yes. Um, so I know we're kind of running up here on time, but before we go, I want to ask you personally if, if uh, let's say one of our listeners is is wanting sort of a piece of advice, what's something that you wish you knew when you were starting out in either the organization or human factors just in general? Well, I think the, the biggest one is how to get involved. Um, and I've tried to push that message out there. And they can certainly contact me. So I'm you know, going the governance page of, of HFES, the Human Factors Economic Society, and you can send me an email and we can get you involved. Um, I've been recruiting people and I'll be sending out a summary of what the opportunities are and they can pick how they, they want to get involved. The biggest thing, and I, I, you know, I have a mentee, um, I've had him since I was in actually the matching game that was run by Heidi and, uh, on, on Monday uh, a year ago. And I, uh, I, I've mentored him throughout the year and continue. I've met up with him today. But, and he would probably tell you the same thing of get involved. I mean, just, you know, the, those, the, those type of involvements are so rewarding. Um, you know, it, it, and, and you think that you don't have time and, and that, but you, you end up doing it and it's like, wow, I made a major con- contribution. And it's potentially ch- changing our society, the, 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 we have many initiatives for the global society that can really make a, a big difference. And so that's the biggest thing is how to, how to get, you know, how, I had a lot of great mentors throughout my life, a lot of them informal, but they really pushed me to get involved. Um, you know, I had, that's how I got to be division chair, that's how I got to be um, all the way up being pushed to, to run for council. I right. didn't do that on my, by myself. It wasn't like, oh, don't do that. No, people said, no, you should do it. And, yeah. and so getting involved at different levels is, is where, what I would say, you know, back when I was a student, I would have never thought. And that my mentor, you know, who's now actively involved in the society, started as an undergrad. And before he started his Ph.D. program, he was on two or three committees. I mean, that it's and, and he will tell you that, that the opportunities that you get out of that, of knowing, um, you know, people and, and understanding of the people in the profession is just, I mean, it's opened up so many opportunities for him, actually. It's been pretty yeah, That's excellent. So, and it's nothing directly, on, you know, related to me even, so a lot of that stuff. So that was really. Yeah, I just have to say, Kermit, it's, it's been refreshing coming to HFES this year and talking with you over the past few months to really understand that you guys are trying to make an effort to really bring back membership get more engaged with people and i think you're taking all of the right steps and yeah. i just want to say again like nick did thank you so much Sincerely. for having us here thank and you thank so you. much i mean I, I i hope this is a partnership we can you know grow and we can uh you know make it even more visible um and and even throughout the year to 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 help you know i see it you're benefiting us as much as we're benefiting you um, and having that opportunity because it is an opportunity we're, we were not going to have. So, um, you know, and, and I guess you in the in the, the luck of the randomness of, you know, one mentee getting selected, yeah. suggesting this and then me hooking up. I mean, it's like my diversity panel yesterday. Uh, the, the moderator, um, uh, Doug Mitchell, who you, you interviewed, mm-hmm. uh, I just randomly sent an email into NPR local chat and then it bounced to his e- his email and he said, what's this about and then after talking to him he's like yeah I want to get involved and now he's talking yeah. about I want to come back next year he was and great so to me I mean we this is just one of these opportunities that networking and getting involved really helps change and uh, so that's the I think that's how I would like to wrap it up and stuff so great so if our listeners want to find out more about hfes is there a website they can go to hfes.org excellent well kermit thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us we really appreciate everything that you've done for us and as well as the organization i mean honestly we have a lot to look forward to over the next year uh, and i'm excited to see all of it so you know how we end the show because you listen Welcome to it so to i'll count us down and say it depends ready three two one it's it depends. depends and design